Hey, salutations friends, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Sarah. So, a long time ago, I read a manga by the name of Knights. And when I say a long time ago, I actually mean around the same time that Code Geass was first released, which was about 2007-ish. I just happen to remember that because both mangas have a character by the name of Euphemia. It's the first time I've ever heard anyone with that name before. Anyway, the setting of this manga is basically a medieval Europe, and the, the main conflict revolves around the church burning witches. Now, though there are supernatural elements in this manga, none of the witches burned by the church are actually witches. In a lot of cases, they are girls that are burned at the stake for political reasons. For example, the church may accuse the girl of witchcraft. This girl is the daughter and only heir of a landowner. If this girl is executed, then the father's lands will eventually default to the church. And that's actually pretty interesting to me. It's probably the first time I've seen an evil church storyline that had such realistic motivations associated with it. Now, admittedly, I'm not much of a history buff myself, but I could imagine situations like that having happened in real life. So the church, as you can imagine for a story like this, the majority of the members of the church that we meet throughout the storyline are not very nice people. Even the ones that aren't corrupt are absolute Knight Templar style characters. Let me give you an example. An early chapter in the story is about a young, pious, noble girl. A church official convinces this girl that she made a deal with the devil and became a witch. The official convinces her of this by finding a birthmark on the girl's body, stabbing this birthmark with a torture needle. Uh, think a dagger, but with a blade that's shaped like a needle. Now, the needle in question is a prop. It's designed so that the needle is pushed into the hilt when pressured. Now, the main characters save this girl from being executed and show her the trick with the needle. This girl is, of course, relieved to find out that she's not actually a witch. She was just tricked by some corrupt preacher. Unfortunately, she is then confronted by a witch hunter who says, even if the mark was nothing but a ruse, for just a moment you doubted God, and that is a sin of heresy. So you see, you really are a witch. And then the poor girl is executed for witchcraft. Yeah, friendly bunch, as you can imagine. So the main character of the story is Mistleton, or Mist for short. Mist is a swordsman who goes by the moniker of the Black Knight. Now, a Black Knight is a literary stock character who masks his identity and that of his liege by not displaying heraldry. Black Knights are usually portrayed as villainous figures who use this anonymity for misdeeds. Now, that's probably not the reason that Mist goes by the moniker of the Black Knight, though the definition does actually fit for him. You see, Mist is part of an organization that fights the church. Mist joined this organization because he lost a parent to the witch burnings. He's also occasionally linked to demons because of his skin color. There's a point in the manga where he's in the middle of a tournament. A joust, specifically. Mist manages to win the tournament, and he's being celebrated by the crowd. He's also at the time wearing a helmet, so no one actually knows what he looks like. He gets goaded into taking off his helmet, and his adoring fans abandon him. Though, to be fair, that's not even the worst thing he had to deal with that day. Don't worry though, like most manga where the main character is an outcast, he does eventually find people that care about him. Would you effin' stop? 
Anyway, before recommending this manga, I should say that I have two issues with it. One of those having to do with Mist himself. That has to do with Mist's fighting style. Now, fighting techniques are a staple in manga, especially when the main character uses a sword. Kenshin has Hiten Mitsurugi style. Tanjiro uses both water breathing and sun breathing. Sasuke uses cast shade no jutsu. So what does Miss use? This. He uses this. <sighs> For those of you just listening to this and not looking at the video, he's holding the sword backwards and using it like a sledgehammer. He does this specifically to get through an armored opponent. Now, when I first saw this back in 2007, I thought this was the stupidest thing I'd ever seen. Why would the author even think this is a good idea? How is this something that anybody would even think of doing? Who even thought of this? Now, this is probably a good time to state that my knowledge of swords and medieval fighting styles could be best summed up as... You know how to use that thing? Hmm. Point the end goes into the other one. So, imagine my surprise when some 15 years after I first read this manga, I see this. That, or what you can also do is you can flip it around and strike with the pommel or cross guard. And this one here doesn't have either. So, right here, you can strike either with the guard or with the pommel. And thereby, you basically turn it into an improvised mace or hammer. With this Let it be known that I know very little about swords and medieval fighting styles. The point the end goes into the other man. The point the end goes into the other man. The point the end goes into the other man. So, let me just erase this. So there's one issue I have with this manga, and that is actually to do with Miss Partner. So let me introduce Euphemia, the character who is inspiring the title of this video. And to be honest, she's probably one of the weakest elements in this manga. And if I'm being honest, that is probably hypocritical of me to say, because I'm pretty sure seeing her on the cover is the reason I even picked up this manga to begin with. Yeah, seeing cute women on covers was an so is one of the reasons I'll even pick up a manga. So Euphemia, she calls herself a witch. However, she's not the typical witch. She doesn't use magic or anything like that. Instead, she uses alchemy. She brews potions, poisons, and aphrodisiacs that she uses to fight. It was her grandmother who taught her how to use alchemy, and her grandmother was burned as a witch prior to the start of the story. Euphemia was going to suffer the same fate, but Mist managed to rescue her. Euphemia then joined the same organization that Mist was a part of and became his traveling partner. Now, unlike Mist, Euphemia isn't a swordsman. Her role in the party is to distract guards and other associated mooks so that Mist can go straight for the boss. For the record, Mist himself doesn't actually have any problems dispatching a small army of mooks. So the reasoning behind this seems to be a combination of time and to minimize casualties. But how does Euphemia distract the guards? Well, she sleeps with them. I'm not making that up. She literally pours an aphrodisiac on her body and kickstarts a... Uh, uh, a group activity. She also has enough stamina to keep going until she is the last person still standing. And please disregard that horse. I'm fairly certain that it just laid down there to take a nap and nothing unholy happened on this night. <sighs> this woman is catching more bodies than Madara. You remember when Madara ran at a whole army of shinobi? Well, if we're power scaling, Euphemia basically pulled off the same feat with some minor differences. <coughs> now, Euphemia's contributions to the fight aren't necessarily unimaginable, 
I'm sure there are plenty of examples of honeypots in history, even though I can't think of any at the moment. Again, I'm not a history buff. It's just the sheer scale of things. Wait, actually, let me take a look through Skalgrim's videos list again, just to make sure. Nope, nothing. All right, nothing, great. Just the sheer scale she goes through shatters my suspension of disbelief. This woman is literally walking towards armies and saying, Sex? And these men are breaking rank and protocol. All these simps broke rank and protocol for an easy lay. That makes me sick. He would be so ashamed of you all. <laughs> okay, I swear I'll stop with the horse jokes. Now, if I'm honest, it is even the fan service that actually bugs me about this. It's the reasoning. Like, if Euphemia went around and slept with a bunch of dudes whenever she visited a new village, I doubt I would have the reaction I did. But the fact that this is a recurring battle strategy is just crazy. What do you even say to it? You going to send Euphemia back to the streets? I'm pretty sure at this point she owns those streets. So, what do I think about Knights? Overall, I enjoyed it. It's a good manga. It's a very short read at only about 25 chapters. If anything I said today interested you, please feel free to check out the manga Knights. Or Skullgrim to learn more about medieval sword fighting. Anyway, please smash that like button and feel free to leave a comment. Peace.